Hey, what's up you guys? It's Mike Nardi here. A few weeks ago, a subscriber of this channel asked if I could provide an example of a Fiverr gig delivery document. In this video, I'm gonna go through a bit of a Fiverr tutorial to show you how to create professional Fiverr gig delivery documents that you can use when delivering your orders to your buyers on Fiverr. This is a Fiverr tutorial that beginner Fiverr sellers can use and experienced Fiverr sellers. It should be helpful for everyone. So in my time as a Fiverr seller, I found that having a consistent process and focusing on ways that you can provide consistently great experiences with your buyers goes a long way. Creating delivery documents helps you do this because it gives you that one last opportunity when you're delivering a project to, to go the extra mile to create great customer experiences and to really solidify the impression you've made on your buyers that you are a top-notch seller worthy of five star ratings and worthy of repeat business. Since I've started implementing delivery documents into all of my Fiverr deliveries, I've definitely noticed an increase in the amount of happy clients. I've gotten clients that you know express how happy they've been throughout the process working with me and an increase in the number of repeat buyers I get on Fiverr, which is awesome. Needless to say, I'm a big fan of delivery documents, so if you want to give them a shot, I'm going to show you how to create your own in this video. And just as important as Fiverr gig delivery documents are, is making sure you're subscribed to this channel. I create videos about Fiverr, making money on Fiverr, and Fiverr tips every week. So subscribing to this channel and hitting the notification bell means you won't miss a single upload. So if you're trying to make money on Fiverr, I don't think you want to miss an upload. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell. I really appreciate it. Let's get into the video. All right, so for this video, I'm gonna create a sample delivery document in Google Docs. It doesn't have to be super complicated, but I'm gonna break it down into three sections that I usually use with all of my deliveries to make sure that I'm delivering the same consistent level of good work and good customer experience on every order. So I'm here in Microsoft, or excuse me, I'm here in Google Docs right now, and I just have three parts here. So the blue text here is just for anyone watching this to understand what I usually use to make up a delivery document. So the first part is a project summary. So when I'm delivering a project, I always like to summarize what the client told me they wanted before they placed the order. So information that they put in the requirements gathering questions or information that we've discussed throughout the project process of you know getting this order from you know, the point where the buyer was telling me and asking me if I could do it to placing an order. So I, you could write something like goal or desired outcome. So in my case, as a copywriter, I might reiterate uh, what type of emails they wanted me to write for them and what they were hoping those emails would accomplish. So something like um, the goal of this project is to write an email sequence targeting dentists offices to sell, uh, to book meetings, to sell software ABC. So in this case, um, the goal or desired outcome in this theoretical example would be to write emails that my client would use to target dentist offices, uh, to book meetings, to sell software ABC. And software ABC would essentially be whatever your client is, right? So I'm assuming that the person I'm working with is a software company in this case. Part two of this, and this is something that will be different from person to person, is writing what your approach or your strategy to completing this project was. In my opinion, this is the most important part. So, you know, as freelancers, we're experts. Clients are hiring us because we know our trade way better than they do. Otherwise, they would have done it themselves. So, I wrote messaging strategy here because, you know, to go with the example that I'm using here as if I was writing sales and marketing emails for people, um, you know, there's gonna be a strategy behind why I'm doing what I'm doing. So for example, uh, if I'm trying to contact dentist offices, my messaging strategy might be to try to bring awareness to problems dentists might be facing. So I could write something like, for this campaign, the strategy was to focus on um, dentists, focus on the fact, focus on freeing up more time for dentists and business 
owners to spend acquiring new clients versus um, managing existing clients or client issues. So in the case of an email copywriter, um, especially when you're selling, trying to write copy to help sell software, a big problem that software and a lot of SaaS solutions try to solve is time or lack of time or time wasted doing non-revenue generating activities. So for this example, I would say, hey, for this campaign, the strategy was to focus on freeing up more time for dentists and business owners to spend acquiring new clients versus managing existing clients. So it's saying, hey, this software can help you save time so that you can make more money versus wasting time and making the same money. Um, this is important, right? So it's it might already be tr apparent what the strategy should be based on your requirements, but by reiterating it here and maybe putting your own spin on things or, or maybe highlighting a strategy that you've implemented that might not be immediately apparent to your client, it goes a step further to you know proving to your client that you are an expert and that goes a long way because if a client feels that they're getting expert quality work they're gonna feel a lot better about the final project and the last thing I always include something in my delivery document that provides a little bit of extra value so in the case of email copywriting um, one thing I might do is just give them some general advice on the best times of day to send these emails based on my experience in the past. So for example, uh, for this campaign, it will likely be best to send early in the morning, 4 a.m. days, and uh, late in the evening after 7 p.m. as these are likely to be dentist office owners off hours. So for example, in this example of contacting dentists, um, you're letting the client know, hey, for this campaign, it's probably best if you send this before 8 a.m. on weekdays or after 7 p.m. on weekdays because this is typically the time that your prospective clients will be off work and they're more likely to open their emails when they're off work. So this, is an ex this whole example I've used is for a copywriter because I'm a copywriter, but you can use this for graphic design. For example, in this project summary portion, if you're a graphic designer, you could say, hey, the goal of this project is to create an awesome brand or logo for your business. Instead of messaging strategy, you could say, hey, brand strategy. For this project, I've gone with, gone with this design approach based on the fact that it's been very successful for this type of business, this type of business, and this type of business. And you could give examples of other successful businesses that you've leveraged similar strategies to. And then for the extra value portion, um, you could say, hey, I know you ordered, you know, for example, one logo in the case of a logo designer, I've included two, I've included a black and white variant that you can use in high contrast advertising settings. You can really do whatever you want in this portion, but basically what the extra value portion is, is you're doing or giving them something for free to make them feel like they're getting even more than what they paid for and that will go a long way. This is pretty much all I do. Obviously, depending on the scope of the project, I might put some more time into filling out each of these sections, depending on the scope and how complicated the project was. But by saving this as a PDF and delivering it with every order, it, it helps eliminate any maybe negative sentiments or feelings your client might be having by giving yourself and taking that last opportunity when you're delivering the order to say, hey, listen, here's what the order was for. Here's how I completed the order to give them an idea of the work you actually did. And then, hey, here's something extra for you, you know, free of charge. Enjoy. Good luck. This is going to help you a lot. It's not rocket science. It's just going the extra mile when delivering your orders. So that's it for this video. Do you think that this will be helpful for you and your fiber orders? Let me know in the comment section. If you're you know, someone who sells services on Fiverr that aren't copywriting or graphic design and you're curious what you can include in each of these sections for your delivery documents, let me know what your questions are. I'll answer them as quickly as I can in the comments and happy selling. So until next time, cheers.